Hi, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And uh, thanks for coming back and joining me today, babe. Always a pleasure. <laughs> so, um, as promised, this is going to be our question and answer episode to celebrate our one-year youtube anniversary. Mm -hmm. And uh, Confetti. Yay! <laughs> we don't have any confetti. We don't have any. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But uh, we got a couple of great questions from our um, Instagram followers, so thank you guys for sending those in. And so we got one each, which was a, a good breakdown of the topics. So the first one is um, brewery-related, and Susan writes, uh, if you were going to do a mini brewery or brew pub tour in Vermont, where would you go? And then uh, to help us out, she suggests six places over three days. So thank you for consolidating that, Susan. Yeah. Yeah, Susan, I appreciate that because otherwise it is kind of like, how do you f pick your favorite child or your favorite pet or whatever? No, well, you don't want to do that. So giving us the parameters of six days or six breweries uh, or brew pubs over three days made it a little bit easier, but still a yeah. challenge. Because Vermont still has the um, number one per capita uh, density of breweries, so it's it it is hard to pick from among the sixty or so. And narrow it down right right oh and speaking of the number of breweries uh the vermont brewers association is a great resource so we're going to tell you about a number of places that are favorites and we've uh, been to or drank from whether it's at a nano brewery a festival or something else there's also a list in the map of all the other breweries that are participating in the vermont brewers association on their website and we'll make a link in the notes below mm -hmm. yeah so um where would you start well, let's start close to home. I guess okay. we have we are lucky enough to have two really great breweries right in our own backyard. Um, we've mentioned them, and you uh, have seen interviews with the folks at Upper Pass, and you've seen interviews with the folks behind Brocco Bank. Um, the former have opened a new tasting room at their coffee shop. So they recently started a place that's called the First Branch Coffee Shop, and it's in downtown South Royalton. Really nice location. Downtown. I downtown. Get that what you're laughing. The village. The village of Royalton, <laughs> yes. So right there on the green, uh, they refurbished a beautiful space that has lots of brick walls, etc. And they have a great, they, cof they roast coffee on site, but they also have a tasting room, live music, and they also do two days of uh, food. Mm -hmm. So they do a Taco Tuesday and a Flatbread Friday. Right. And they, I don't know if they have plans to expand, but I like their model. They have guest chefs coming in, so they have a kitchen, but they're not paying a, a kitchen staff full time, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a good model for them. There are other restaurants in the village, so they're not competing too much, but right. they're adding something to it. Um, and like you said, they have that tasting space, so you can go in and get the upper pass beers there. You can get mm -hmm. um, tastes and pours and take cans home. Right. And another is that their proximity to the Worthy Burger, which is one, our most local craft brew pub in the area. So you can go over, do some tastings of that, and then also go over, if it's not a Tuesday or Friday, perhaps just walk over to the Worthy Burger and have some good food and craft beers from other parts of the state or New England. We think that the uh, First Branch Coffee is a good one. And the other we mentioned was Brocco Bank, which is in Tunbridge. Now, the downside is that there's only open on Friday afternoons and Saturday afternoons. Mm -hmm. But the upside is they have great live music, really nice, passionate people behind the scenes there that are really friendly. And it just has a, a, a really nice sense of community. Right. It's a husband and wife team. So Ben does all the brewing and Anne does more of the front of house and marketing stuff. But they're, they're usually both there. And so you can talk you can talk to them directly about the beer. There's not like a, I don't know, there's not like a layer of staff between you and the brewer. If you, if you like making that kind of close connection, yeah. that's available for you. Yeah. And they have um, tastings and growler fills and they do some bottle, um, some canning as well. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So as far as those would do close to home, those would be the two. Mm -hmm. Um, Another one I would probably recommend is relatively close is uh, Good Measure Brewing, which is in Northfield, which is really kind of off the beaten path. It's uh, in the small village in Northfield, which also houses or ho is home to Norwich University. Um, but it's not really a hustle and bustle downtown or even a common. There's not much going on really. Right. Now. I mean, it's bigger than South Royalton or Tunbridge, for True. sure. True. Because, and especially because of the academy being there. Mm -hmm. But... Um, like you said, it's not really on the beaten path. It, there is an interstate exit off 89, but mm -hmm. it doesn't, 
you still have to drive a little bit to get to the village. Right. Um, but, but it's a cute place. We yeah, like it's it. a yeah. cute place. Really knowledgeable staff. Great brewers. Um, growler fills as well. Actually, they do bottles. Uh, they do these tall bottles that are really kind of nice. Yeah, they look sort of like wine bottles. Yeah. And um, very nice, knowledgeable people. Very open, warm space. They're very community-oriented. And then if you're looking for some food, you can go either right next door to the Cornerstone Burger Company, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a satellite uh, uh, restaurant of the main Cornerstone, which is in downtown Barrie. But also you have the proximity to Montpelier. And one of the people behind the North Field, oh, excuse me, behind uh, Good Measure Brewing mm -hmm. is also one of the owners of the Three Penny Tap Room. And that is another place to get amazing craft beers from around the world, as well as some very good farm table food. Right. And, and of course, a lot of Vermont beers featuring on their yeah. beer menu. Yeah. Yeah. Scott. Um, Kerner. Is, Kerner. That's right. Hi, Scott. Um, <laughs> who I hope to interview um, on the channel at some point. But, and they also do the coffee beer blend thing, too. Right. So Scott is also um, part owner of... Uh, Carrier, Carrier Roasting. Carrier Roasting Company, which is right next door to Good Measure yeah. in Northfield. So yeah, you have a sign that says coffee, and then the sign says beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and I think they use some of their coffees in some of their beers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like Rick said, there's also that great um, burger place there. So you can mm -hmm. kind of make a little evening of it if you wanted to, or an afternoon. You can mm -hmm. go pick up some fresh roasted coffee, you can taste some beers, and you can go have dinner. Correct. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to have been up here this past weekend or the weekend before, it's right in the same village that the Cabot Hosiery Sock Sale is. And you can check out our video on that as well, which we did last year about the same time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, let's see, moving on up, we're kind of in both different directions. The one other place that we both kind of agreed on was the Vermont Pub and Brewery, which is in Burlington. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, this is a historic place, right? Uh, certainly, it's almost kind of the uh, the focal point of the craft beer movement in Vermont, if not New England. Uh, it was originally I would say across the country because he really got yeah. started early on when in the seventies when home brewing uh, laws had been lifted and some of the um, local production laws about how you could brew beer, how you could have samples available, how yeah. you could distribute were being changed. Right. Um, so yeah, talk about yeah so bit. the person she's uh, referring to or Sarah's referring to is uh, Greg Noonan. Uh, he's kind of the godfather of craft brewing as far as America, but specifically New England. Mm -hmm. um, and he founded the Vermont Pub and Brewing Company. Unfortunately, he passed away a number of years ago, but his spirit continues with this place. And I, I know the, the couple of times we've been there, it's great. Right, it's kind of pub grub. Good pub grub. Uh, it has almost an English pub feel. Dark mm -hmm. wood and paneling and booths and tables. Uh, friendly, knowledgeable staff. Yeah, it's a really nice, yeah. comfort place. Um, and they they seem to have some house beers. You know, some styles that they always brew, and mm -hmm. then they have a rotating menu of seasonal styles that they do. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's a, a place that you could take a larger party. So if you're traveling yeah. with family or with a bigger group or meeting friends, mm -hmm. that would be a place you could go get a table for you know 10 or 12 pretty right. easily. Right. Yeah. And right around the corner is one of our uh, favorite little uh, gastro pubs, which is the Farmhouse Tap and Grill. A little pricier as far as food is concerned, uh, but again, it has great beers, wines, ciders, and mm -hmm. a good pairing menu, and again, another knowledgeable group of staff. Oh, and if you're there during the summer, they have a nice beer garden. That's right. Yep. And they don't actually brew beer on site. So yeah. if we're sticking with brew pubs, um, it's Vermont Crumb Brewery, but I love Farmhouse. They do the farm-to-table thing very well. So again, as Rick said, it's maybe one price point higher, um, but very fresh food and a rotating menu. So yeah. always something new to try. Right, yeah. right. Now, I'm trying to think, again, not to jump around the state too much. She did say in three over three days, I probably organize these a little better than I'm doing them off the cuff while I'm talking. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but another place, uh, we go to White River Junction frequently. That's a nice little up-and-coming village. It was a sleepy little railroad town uh, that boomed and busted and now seems mm -hmm. to be on the recovery again right now. A lot right. going on, new places. Yeah, they made the transition from an industrial warehouse and shipping center to, you know, there's more lofts, apartments, there's um, that theater there. Why am I blanking yeah. the name of that? <laughs> um, we'll put it in the notes. We will. There, but there's a great theater. They do experimental new plays, um, uh, different kinds of things. And, yeah, lots to lots of shopping, antique uh -huh. stores. Um, 
And, and then River Roost. Right. So River Roost is, a, they're more of a New England IPA, but they have other different styles. And uh, they have a great little tasting room and fill station there. Um, and right across the street from that is Big Fatty's, which is one of our favorite yeah. barbecue places. I think we mentioned that a couple of times in passing in other videos. Uh, but Big Fatty's is amazing barbecue. Mm -hmm. Southern style barbecue, which is close to my heart because even though I was born in Vermont, I spent a lot of my childhood in South Carolina. And I would say the one cultural takeaway was the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of left the rest of it behind. But, they but have hush do, puppies. Yes, hush puppies. And if you don't know what those are, just find a restaurant in your area and go have a hush puppy. Yeah. I'm not even going to tell you more. Yeah. Just go eat one. Although maybe <laughs> we'll make hush puppies in the future. No, yeah. no, no pressure. <laughs> um, but right next door also to Big Fatties is they have a filling station. So they will do takeaway crawlers uh, and growlers as well. So... You know, you have the, the food, you have the uh, the pub experience, but you also can take away things as uh, for gifts or just to go back to your hotel room or your Airbnb and have a couple of drinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, yeah. And let's see, the last thing, the, this was the hardest one thing, whether or not to include it because it isn't some place that we've been yet, but it's on our immediate to-do list. We drink a lot of uh, Lawson's Finest Liquids. Probably their Sip of Sunshine is the ubiquitous beer in our refrigerator. Mm -hmm. It's our go-to double IPA. Yeah, it's our number one pick for a Vermont IPA. And there's a lot of big, hoppy Vermont IPAs out there, but this is just our personal favorite. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as Rick said, we've had their beer at festivals a few times. We definitely can get it in our local tap rooms. We can get it at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't been to their tasting room. Right. And I'm not really into the, the kind of push and shove your way to the front of a line kind of experience person. Yeah. So a lot of your more famous um, Vermont um, beer places like the Alchemist or, or Hill Farmstead, or Hill Farmstead. Um, they have amazing beer, of course, but... They also have that kind of beer tourism um, problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're trying to address it the best they can. But it is one of those things where you could encounter lines. You could encounter weights. And, you know, if it's important, if you have a bucket list and those are two of the beers that you want to get, and that's fine. Uh, Hill mm -hmm. Farmstead is consistently considered one of the top, if, or the top brewery in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you, you got to do it, but if, you know, if you don't, if you, you have to kind of build in a little bit of time that you're going to maybe wait in line. Right. Yeah. And for Rick and I, because we live in the state and we can get it on tap and at other places, we're just not that motivated to do that kind of scene. So Lawson's is expanding their tap room. And I think that seems to me like it's going to accommodate these crowds mm -hmm. and be a little bit more of a chill experience. So that's why I'm looking forward to trying that one out. I'm looking forward to it as well because I'm really impressed with Sean Lawson's kind of uh, uh, his plan for that that tasting room. There is it's a no tip establishment. They pay their staff well, and in order to you're not constantly having to work for tips and hustle because then you end up you don't get to spend as much time with your customers. You don't get to spend as much time with the patrons. You don't get to offer advice, mm -hmm. and that is really cool. I'm mm -hmm. really glad to see that Sean is doing that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things in the news about getting to a more livable uh, minimum wage, and that is extremely right. important. And he's doing it by himself with his right food. especially for people in the food service industry because of course historically they're paid below minimum wage well below minimum wage with the idea that tips have to make up that difference and so like yeah. you said he's doing this to be a good um a good steward a good community member and they're they also don't serve food yeah for that same reason right right exactly yeah. so that they will they're not going to serve food because they want to encourage you to go to their neighbors so there's lots in the mad river valley in the waitsfield area there's going to be lots of great places to get food they also are very big on the farm to table movement and he just doesn't want to compete with them mm -hmm. uh, good neighbors and uh, don't compete with one another especially in a very small community there's not a lot of of local dollars or even tourism dollars uh, to go around mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that your neighbors are also being taken care of and that's admirable right so we that is on our list um, and hopefully we can get there before the weather gets too awful <laughs> yeah, yeah it is a challenge to get to some of these places in the winter um, not specifically everybody I think everybody but Lawson shouldn't be a challenge and even Lawson's is it's on the it's on the uh, 
uh, you know, Taunton Main Road. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just hard for us because there's two mountain ranges in right. the way. So, but if you're coming down from Burlington, it's a lot more accessible. <laughs> I want to correct myself. Brockle Bank may be challenging, and if it is inclement weather or recently a snowstorm, um, I would check. Especially look on their, uh, follow them on their social media, mm -hmm. and whether uh, they're very active on Instagram specifically, mm -hmm. but also on Facebook. Um, because you don't want to make your way up those hills and find that the doors are closed or that you can't even get into the parking lot because there's two feet of snow. Right. For me, it's more the mud. It's the spring season. That's Because Dickerman Hill, where they're right off of, mm -hmm. gets this boggy mud. And you do get ruts in the road that are more than a foot deep. So <laughs> <laughs> you can pull up to the brewery and just stay there for a really long time because you're not going to get out. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, Susan, so that is the very long answer that I have uh, off the top of my head of where we would plan a brewery tour. Mm -hmm. And if that is something that you're interested, get in touch with us and we will maybe you know, be able, we should be able to help you design your own brewery and or restaurant tour for your either romantic getaway or a small group. Yep. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, and there are lots of other breweries, of course, we didn't get a chance to touch on. We're not as familiar with things in the southern part of the state, again, because those are a little harder for us to get to. But, um, like Rick said, go to the association website, which we'll link to, and plan your exit. Um, so our second question is more knitting related, so that's more for me. Um, and this person has a more anonymous username. She goes by Mama Hunk in her profile. Um, and she said, what's the best thing about knitting in Vermont? Recently, I bought a house in southern Vermont. Congratulations. Welcome and to the neighborhood. one day, hope it will be our more permanent home. What can I look forward to? Mm. And for that, I would just say the community of people is really embracing. And people around here know how to make their own fun. Um, so unfortunately, there's no local yarn shop that's really close to where we live. Yeah. So we don't have that built-in support system in terms of a place to meet. But, you know, knitters, knitters going to knit. So <laughs> we get together, and there's a whole bunch of groups. There's um, the Sewer Fiber Crafters, South mm -hmm. Royalton Fiber Crafters, which I kind of um, helped reinvigorate with some friends. And we meet once a month on a Tuesday at the library. And there's the Tunbridge um, Fiber Group. They meet in the Tunbridge Library twice mm -hmm. a month. Um, there's a spinning and rug hooking contingent. Okay. They do two Sundays a month. One's more spinning oriented and I go to that one sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there's a rug hooking group that meets the third Sunday of the month. And then, um, in Randolph, there's a very active knitting group, um, with some very advanced knitters. Um, and they meet twice a week. Um, I think they have those because some people can't do one day, you know, particular weekday. Yeah. Um, so they have two opportunities to meet. So just in our little area, that's, you know, potentially, what, six or eight meetings you could go to every month um, if you wanted to. And um, Southern Vermont is, of course, a little more removed, but I looked on Ravelry, and there's over 60 um, social groups oh. on Ravelry just for the state of Vermont. Oh, nice. So I'm sure there's got to be something in that area, maybe even through a, a local yarn shop. But if not, I would contact maybe your local library. Um, and see if they have anything or or talk to them about starting a group of your own. That's what I was going to say. There's a mm -hmm. great way to meet new people. Mama Hunk is to you know start that group and be the per person who invigorates it in your community. Mm -hmm. um, as Sarah said, you know those six those two different groups that she just um, mentioned, and that's all without the support, unfortunately, of having a local yarn store right now. We don't mm -hmm. have a local yarn store, which is really unfortunate, mm -hmm. um, but it's still impressive that without a local yarn store that these knitters and spinners and hookers and everything else get together on a regular right. basis. Yep, and people are very enthusiastic about it. Um, another great resource is the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association, mm -hmm. and although that's set up more to support farmers and shepherds, um, they have a great listing of everyone who makes products, um, including wool and fiber and fleeces and all those things, um, fiber tools and, and, and all that stuff. So I will link to that as well in the show notes. Um, and so if you're curious as to who's got yarn, who makes things you might want in your area, um, that's a great resource to look up. And not just in your area, if you're specifically mm -hmm. looking for a particular breed. If you right. need a specific skein of a particular yarn from a particular breed, go to right. this. Or, or you want bulky yarn, or you want a bat of roving, mm -hmm. or you want this or that kind of preparation. Um, I would also say, since you're in southern Vermont, check out Green Mountain Spinnery, of course. Um, they're an amazing resource. They're a community-owned mill, 
and they do process fiber for other people, but they also have their own beautiful lines of yarn, uh, which you can order online. I'll link to their store as well. Um, but it's a great facility, and they do have a little yarn shop there in Putney. And super nice people, too. Yeah, they're just the greatest. I'm yeah. hoping to interview them as well yeah. at some point. They've yeah. been very supportive of us, and they're just really nice mm -hmm. people. We see yeah. them at the Vermont Sheep and Goat Associate, or Festival, the Wool Festival, mm -hmm. and we see them at other events, and they're just... Just great folks. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And actually this hat I just remembered is made out of Green Mountain Spinner Yarn. So Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're great. Um Tammy, also a wing and a prayer farm. She's down in Shaftesbury, which is I think not far from where um you mentioned you're gonna be settling. So yeah, um there, and I know there's other farms um scattered across the state. There's probably over a hundred people in the state raising sheep mm -hmm. on some kind of a scale. So um, so check that out and find those local producers in your area. You can support them. They'll often have workshops and classes on their farms or open farm days or shearing days or other things um, that you can look forward to. And again, um, local producers and then the groups to, to hang out and do your craft with. Yeah, but I, I agree with the, the first stop in your town might be your library. I mean, first of mm -hmm. all, you should. You should go to your library, support your local library. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a wealth of information uh, there. And if you don't find it, there's already a group meeting. Please start your own. It would be a great way to meet new friends. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks again for your questions. Um, we had a lot of fun doing a little research and answering those. And uh, I hope we can do another um, Q&A session. You know, maybe do this once or twice a year as a regular thing. Yeah, but don't wait. Yeah, and don't. Sorry to interrupt you, Sarah. But <laughs> no, don't, it's okay. <laughs> don't wait to, um, for until we announce that. If you have other questions for us, that maybe we haven't covered, just leave one in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Instagram or some or other uh, things and ask, ask questions. We're happy to answer them whenever we can. Great. Yep. We like being a resource for you, um, whether you're visiting, whether you live here, um, whether you are thinking of moving here. Um, happy. Or if you're just in the area and you want to grab a beer, send right. us a message. We'll, we'll be happy to join you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone again for joining us. Don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, click on the bell icon in the upper right hand corner of your screen to get notifications when we have new videos. They come out every Monday. Thanks for joining us and tune in next week. We'll have more for you. Thanks everybody. Take care.